Hey everybody, it's Matt from nsickness.org. Today I'm going to be talking about the top 22 triggers of mast cell activation. This is something I struggled with myself, was able to overcome with the help of various natural supplements, uh, foods, etc. So I want to go over all the triggers, things that actually can uh, aggravate your mast cell symptoms or flare you up, okay? So in this video I'm going to go down a list of all the triggers here, okay? And then I'm going to talk about how the severity of each trigger depends on each individual. Okay? So let's first start with food sensitivities. Food sensitivities are a major contributor to mast cell activation, probably the most. Um, you could have food sensitivities to the typical dairy, wheat, eggs, nuts, processed food or, or food preservatives, etc. Uh, food sensitivities is a major, major contributor to mast cell activation. Unless you get that under control, uh, you're not going to be able to make the type of progress you want. Uh, what happens when you eat these foods is the mast cells secrete histamine, inflammatory chemicals, and inflammation starts, leaky gut starts in your stomach, and uh, it starts this process of overreact, overreactive immune response, um, which is triggered by the mast cells initially. So food sensitivities you must get under control, and the best way to do that is with a dietary log to pay attention to what you're eating and follow low ingredient diets, um, and less ingredients is better at each particular meal. So, number two, acute or chronic stress. If you're under stress, physical stress, whether it's you got surgery or you know you, you had a stressful event or you're arguing with your, your husband or wife, etc., um, these things can take a toll on the body. They can affect the immune response. And the longer that they last, the more likely they're to aggravate your mast cells and to contribute to your reactions that you're having. Right? So number three, exercise. Believe it or not, exercise increases histamine levels. It increases activation of the mast cells. If you are going to exercise and you have mast cell issues, you want to keep it to 15 minutes or less. If you're doing well, 25 minutes or less or so, gradually work your way up. You want to keep your heart rate down. You don't want to keep it uh, you know, pumping too hard or it's going to set your stress uh, hormones off in your body and that is not good for mast cell activation. Next, high histamine foods. Okay. There's a lot of foods that are considered to be healthy that are high histamine, like bananas, avocados, etc., cetera, um, nuts, all that. These foods are not a good fit for someone who has mast cell activation. If you eat these foods on a regular basis, your histamine levels become elevated in your blood, and what happens is the higher your histamine levels are in your blood, the more reactive your mast cells become, and the, more, uh, the quicker that they replicate. All right? That is not what you want. You want to have a reduced population of mast cells and you want them to be secreting anti-inflammatory chemicals, not histamine and other inflammatory chemicals. So high histamine foods are a must. The low histamine diet is a great way to stop that from getting worse. Mold or indoor irritants. This is a huge one. If you have mold or you're inhaling something indoors that is causing you immune sensitivity or immune issues, it will override the rest of this. You can be doing almost everything else right. If you're inhaling mold, if you're inhaling some type of synthetic chemical, you're inha inhaling various things in your indoor environment, that could set you off, okay? And that could be something that nothing else, no matter what you did everywhere else, doesn't matter, your immune system could be going crazy because you're constantly inhaling it 24 seven. It's not even like you get a break like you would with food, eating it then and then eating it later. It's constant exposure, which makes the immune system become more and more and more and more aggravated and then anything you put in your body becomes sensitive to and reactive to. So you definitely want to pay attention to that. Magnesium deficiency. Magnesium deficiency is key because magnesium is a precursor to DAO, which is an enzyme that breaks down histamine in the body. And magnesium keeps mast cells calm. When magnesium levels are low, you have a depletion of certain bacteria in your stomach, like bifidobacterium, they're responsible for keeping the immune system modulated. You have a, a lower stress tolerance. Uh, you have a lot of things that are going against you in your body when your magnesium levels are low because magnesium is the most important mineral in the entire body. Next, parasites, Lyme, pathogens. This is like the main cause of mast cell activation, really. Uh, the underlying issue most often. Parasites are the most likely to cause the immune response to be overactive. Lyme disease is another one that, that will really uh, set your body off, set your immune system off big time. And other types of pathogens, bacterial pathogens and fungal pathogens, uh, like Canada are the least likely to set you off, but um, a lot of time they can contribute to mast cell activation. Most of the time when people have bacterial infections or SIBO or something like that, uh, that they think is bacterial or fungal, it's there because of parasites or some other 
infection that's present, parasites, viruses, Lyme, etc. So that is something that contributes to mast cell activation. Gallbladder or bilary issues. If you're not secreting enough bile, you actually aren't going to break your fats down. You don't break your fats down, they inflame the stomach lining. Inflame the stomach lining, that causes leaky, in, enhances the intestinal permeability, your leaky gut gets worse, and, uh, and then particles in your gut uh, go into your bloodstream, which aggravates the immune response. So you have to make sure you do liver flushes, in my opinion. Um, the Hall Clark liver flush is the one I use. I have a couple videos on that if you want to take a look at my website or my YouTube page. And uh, so that's absolutely critical. Another thing is, uh, you know, bilary, uh, bilary acids um, or uh, bile specifically um, signals actually the immune response. If you don't have sufficient bile, um, you're going to have uh, issues with your immune response as well. And also bile is important for cleaning out the liver, cleaning out the body. Um, and if you don't have enough bile, you're just going to have a lot of issues with breaking down proteins and fats, which will contribute to mast cell issues. So elevated estrogen. Most people who have mast cell issues have elevated estrogen. Even if you're men, if you're a guy and you have mast cell activation, typically testosterone levels are low. At one point, I had testosterone levels of a 90-year-old man, okay? And this was uh, it's really very disheartening at the time, but the reality was is testosterone keeps your immune system in check. It keeps the inflammation down. When estrogen becomes elevated, then testosterone's low, basically. Um, and when estrogen is elevated, your immune system can become overactive and get out of hand. So that's another contributing factor. Synthetic fragrances, very important to address this. If you're smelling anything in the air, okay, hand soaps that have fragrances, any type of smell, all right, that is, that is synthetic in nature, all right, natural, quote unquote, natural flavors, etc. these things can all contribute to mast cell issues. Synthetic fragrances are so serious, they cause my daughter two seizures, okay? Two different seizures. Um, one of them, she stopped breathing, and she had, you know, some of the worst mast cell issues, um, and she was extremely sensitive. Her lungs, were, uh, her lungs were extremely damaged from pneumonia when she was young, so anything she was inhaling, specifically anything was an irritant, would cause her immune system to go through the roof, right? So next one. Eating the same foods every single day. If you eat the same foods every day, you're likely to produce reactions to these foods eventually, especially when you have uh, bacterial parasitic infection in the stomach. The infection will uh, be able to break the food down better and better and better and better as you eat it every single day. Um, it'll, it'll actually adapt to it um, and produce you know, the waste that triggers your immune response. In addition, when you eat the same food every day, you have a higher probability of some of those food particles going through the leaky gut into the bloodstream and then the immune system recognizing it and starting to label it as a potential irritant or a pathogen. Um, this could be with nearly any food if you eat it every single day. Next one, synthetic supplements and pharmaceuticals. Big one. If you're taking pharmaceuticals, it's triggering an immune response, whether you realize it or not. Most of these pharmaceuticals are meant to mask inflammation. They don't actually address root cause. If you got an anti-anxiety meds, SSRIs, ADHD medication, um, medication for stomach issues, you know, uh, mast cell medication even. All these things are synthetic. They will aggravate the immune response eventually. Anything synthetic, including synthetic vitamins like multivitamins, uh, synthetic vitamin C, B vitamins, all these things. Eventually, if they are not plant derived, they will aggravate the immune response. Most people usually get some benefit within the first three to five days. Oh my God, I'm getting so much benefit from this pharmaceutical. Oh my God, I'm getting so much benefit from this uh, synthetic supplement. Well, reality is, in most cases, they react to it by the, ten, by the 10th day, 14th day or so. So that is something to consider, consider when you're looking at this. Substance abuse, any type of substance that alters your mind or alters your neurotransmitters will affect mast cell activation because that affects your immune response. Leftovers, condiments, dried herbs, these things are all absolutely uh, big time triggers. You know, you do not want to eat these things. Um, leftovers accumulate histamine uh, over time from the bacteria that's on it. The condiments have so many different ingredients and so many different strong flavors, they'll trigger you almost instantly. In dried herbs, a lot of this time, they contain mold, mold spores, and they um, contain other, uh, uh, other stuff on them that makes them not a good fit. And a lot of these are such strong flavors, they just don't match with the immune system well. So if you're going to use herbs, you want to use fresh herbs, okay? Anything synthetic, all right? Literally anything synthetic can trigger mast cells. This is 
Um, this is things you're inhaling. This is things you're taking. But you have to realize the things you're surrounding yourself with have to be derived from plants or naturally derived. They cannot be synthetic. I don't even use any synthetic cleaners in my household. I don't use any synthetic um, laundry detergent. We don't use anything that's synthetic in my household. All right. Next, interrupted sleep patterns. If you don't have good sleep, that'll reduce your stress tolerance, which will make your mast cells more reactive. And that is something you really want to address specifically the REM sleep. Uh, sun, heat, cold, all those can make the body under, put the body under stress, especially prolonged exposure. That can trigger mast cells. EMF exposure, specifically for mobile devices, okay? And Bluetooth devices, I've heard from some clients, but mobile devices. I've seen um, people react, uh, I've, I've spoke to clients that have told me they're reacting from EMF, and I believe them. And I've seen my daughter react to him, who was highly, rea highly reactive to almost everything. Just from her sitting holding the phone like this for 40, 50 minutes, her face blushes up red. You can see her eyes get more black, she stops listening as much, her attention gets out of whack. EMF and mobile devices can aggravate mast cells, specifically if you're staring into them for extended periods of time. Studies show 50 minutes of mobile use can actually cause neurological inflammation. Artificial flavors, preservatives, um, even if it says natural flavors, most of the time those are actually artificial flavors combined with natural flavors. Um, preservatives, any type of synthetic preservative in food can trigger mast cell responses. And lastly, I want to talk about the severity of each reaction or each trigger depends on the person and their exposure. If, for example, someone had a lot of issue with food sensitivities and kept eating the same things over and over again, that may be their main issue. If they have uh, had an issue of longer science issues, they might be more reactive to environmental triggers, right? Um, if they had a past exposure with some type of synthetic fragrance that caused them issue like my daughter did, then you could be uh, sensitive to synthetic fragrances more than most people. Um, but the key point is the more you are exposed to any of these triggers, the more that trigger is going to trigger you, in essence. So um, severity of the triggers depends on the person. If you guys have any questions about this, feel free to reach out. My website's nsickness.org. Add your comments in the YouTube if you'd like as well. Feel free to subscribe if you like my content. And uh, just want to mention this is for educational purposes only. This is not meant to be medical advice, and this is for based on my personal experience, experience I've had with my daughter, my clients, the scientific evidence and literature I've come across. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.